up, nerds? Welcome to season three of the Unvaulted Podcast, and I'm your host, Squatting Dog, but you can call me the new acting like Tommy since he retired from Fortnite. On this season of the podcast, we're keeping a hand on the pulse of chapter three and following its evolution as a whole covering of creative, casual, and competitive. Last week, we talked to a more casual environment, and today, we're going to chat with someone who understands the competitive side. Today's guest has made thousands from Fortnite and is in the upper 1% of players in the game. Welcome to the podcast, Colazzo. Thank you for having me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, Happy man. Welcome. Here. Thanks for saying yes and uh, giving us some of your <laughs> insight as somebody who plays the game competitively, which like not very many people can say they're in the top 1% of this game i feel like competitive competitiveness runs pretty deep in you doesn't it mm-hmm. no absolutely it's like all i do for gaming pretty much yeah and before this you were weren't you at penn state midfield for soccer right yeah it was like d3 school but yeah it was always everything i did was always some type of competitive level so that makes sense that would tell me a little up. bit about what gets you excited about competitive things in general and how you kind of found yourself at playing a competitive game like Fortnite. Dude, I think it's like a I think it's a problem to be honest. Like it's like a <laughs> it's a serious issue that I have and a lot of people have. It's like you do things casually. It's a, it's like gambling. Like everything you do casually is great and then until you experience it for something more and then it's horrible when you do it casually because there's always higher stakes make it more probably mm. just thrilling. It's like way more enjoyable. So I guess with gaming and stuff it starts off as like you're playing pubs you're having a good time and then you play matches against your friends for money and then other people for more money and then tournaments come out and you're like oh there's more money in that and it's just like i don't know that probably brings it up a notch i'm sure that's why I, it's it, i think that's why it's a bad thing i can't even have fun it's hard to have fun when you oh. when you push the limits like that when people are like hey man it's a game just have fun you're like no money is on the line <laughs> yeah, i've been playing for money for two and a half years in this game three years in this game i mean it's been on the line since i started pretty much so it's definitely hard to just play pubs and take it casual well this is going to be a good conversation because i am probably the opposite i don't think i've made a dollar in terms of competitive <laughs> but i love having fun in the game so i think this this duality if you will Perfect. will be really good for for people that are listening who might find themselves on either side of of this conversation so my whole hope for this colosso is to uh parse out what what has happened in chapter three from a competitive standpoint you have a lot to share on this you're pretty passionate about the meta <clears throat> and about all those things so we're going to dive into that but i think for those that don't know who you are let's give them a little bit of context for you sound good mm-hmm. okay so i've got uh, some icebreakers for you uh first question is one that i ask everyone that's on the podcast i'd love to know your origin story for your name uh Colazzo. <clears throat> um i guess it comes back to the the soccer at penn state thing because i played soccer my whole life i'm like it's so cringy when I explain it because I'm like some white dude. But like in like other countries, when you score, like in Spanish speaking countries, probably or Portuguese, it's probably they yell golazo when someone golazo. scores. And my friends, yeah, like that better than me. And my friends used to, <laughs> the ones that didn't necessarily play as much, because like when I first went, usually freshmen don't start. And I was like one of two freshmen that did. And like my other freshman friends would like yell colazo because my name's Cole. So like, yeah a little mix they would yell that when i would score and like it was yeah that's kind of how i got the nickname they would call me in on and off the field and then i my first gamer tag was like colosso with like an an s at the end and had a it had the l in there so now it's it's evolved into a much worse harder to pronounce harder to look at name (laughs) also really difficult to find if you don't put the one in there what's the one about (laughs) I couldn't so get if the those L that are listening there. instead of an L it's a one. And so if you're looking for him on like on Twitch, you gotta make sure you have that one in there. It's, I just couldn't get the L. It's just nothing I could do. I guess <laughs> I could have got, I could have got the L on like Twitter and like, then uh-huh. I would have had, but then I would have had an L on Twitter and like a one on every other social media. So it'd be harder to find me. So I just made sure I went with the one on everything. It's like simple it be, or like Metro or something. Or Yeah. It would be so <laughs> nice if they had like something to where like, if you're looking for a name, it scouted all of the social medias at the same time for it. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel be like great. I have amazing. the in front of my my name and like Instagram and Twitter. I'm like, oh, it would just be nice to be just squatting dog, like straight up, not no weird stuff. 
no yeah i swear linktree didn't even like exist when i maybe it did i feel like that's a great thing you just i could have yeah. just used linktree and had all my links until i slowly transitioned them all over to the l now i feel like it's just too late for me yeah probably <laughs> you're too far gone i thought yeah. maybe the one was like your number like when you played soccer or something i was like oh, I, was, I thought it was like some kind of <laughs> that like, would be cool it's just yeah. not that cool though it's just i couldn't <laughs> my branding is miserable <laughs> Hey, at least we're honest about it um okay so tell me a little bit of like how you transitioned from playing you know football to being a content creator and competitive athlete on fortnite and other games uh it was kind of just like i think every day at school or like my whole life i would play football soccer come home and then just play video games all day so School was kind of last priority for me as much as that's like the worst thing ever and it shouldn't be like that, but it, it was. So like I would play, I'd have practice at 7 a.m. and I'd come back and I'd have like a class or two, I'd go to those classes and then I'd come back, I'd go to practice again for like my second practice at college and I'd come back and I'd have homework and more classes and I just wouldn't go to the classes sometimes and I just wouldn't do the homework and I would play video games like all night and eventually, I guess Fortnite became... A, a thing and i just started playing that pretty much every day all day it's just not much else to do when that came out <laughs> dang that's wild so then so then you just started you you kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the podcast you were just saying like you know i, I battle my friend for money and then it led to me playing more intensely and then all of a sudden did you what was it like for you to win actual money from fortnite did you notice something in your in yourself go, ooh, like I might have talent here or because I'm sure like that is like a really that's a benchmark moment. I think for a lot of players is like anytime you win, you get money from mm -hmm. the, the person anything, that puts yeah. the game together. Right. So what was that like for you? Uh, it was probably a little different for me because I guess I'd done it before. Like I played um, that year before Call of Duty came out, I think, or not Call of Duty, Fortnite, sorry. I was playing Call of Duty World War II, which was like the culmination of me playing the game before, which is Modern Warfare. I, Modern Warfare Remastered came out or whatever, and I played the yeah. remastered game like literally 10 hours a day in college. That's why I sucked at school so bad. That game was so <laughs> addicting. And I played Money 8s, and we'd, we'd hop into a lobby, and we'd play 4v4 if you got picked. If you didn't get picked, you're spectating. But I played for money like $20 a match back then. It went from like literally free games to just like, five dollars ten dollars twenty bucks and at the end of that i was like the a little like the better player so you play with more money and then when it came around and naturally i think about after probably a year of playing people realized there was like potential to play against each other for like pub bot racing like you play yeah. pubs against like with one person like duos and you play against another duo and i started entering tourneys and uh i guess in those tourneys i was doing i remember doing pretty well on my xbox and i'd win like if I played like three a day, I'd win like one and make like eighty, ninety dollars, which is nuts. Yeah, and I was—I knew I was pretty good, but it wasn't like I didn't really think it would turn into like that was before events were even happening on Fortnite. Right. Like, I didn't think it turned into like they would give us money just for playing. I just yeah. thought it would be bot racing all day, every day. So I guess it was—it wasn't as hard of a transition for me because I—I knew what it was like to play for money. So when it happened, I was probably one of the first people in there. But it's definitely difficult on that game so it was definitely a good feeling to like do well and win tournaments and make right. money off that i knew i was decent at least <laughs> like yeah were you on xbox and now you're on uh pc i was on xbox and then i switched back to i switched to ps4 because that's where like nick Merckx was with like the right the bot ra all the best bot races were on there uh -huh. and the prize pools for xbox were going from like 150 dollars attorney to like 70 to like 30 and it just became not worth it and the, they would have 20 players in there and the ps4 ones would have like all the best players and nick uh, Burks would be in all of them and like because he'd be in all of them people would enter to join and the prize pools were like 300 bucks and i remember i bought a i saved up with the i guess the money i got from bot racing on my xbox i saved up bought a ps4 and that was the worst thing i've ever done because when i bought i ps4 pro or whatever i bought it and within a uh -huh. week i got end up getting a pc because it was just not worth having other people were on pc and they're playing against me and destroying me i was like this is just yeah. not fun what was that like to bit. i'm sure there's a lot of people listening that also are in a situation where they're like okay i've got a console i kind of want a pc what are what are the advantage or disadvantages of playing competitive because i mean there's there's both i think there's probably a lot more on pc 
than there are on like a controller. But what would you say are the differences um, if somebody's kind of thinking like, do I want to do a PC or do I want to stick with what I'm doing? Like, what would you advise them? Uh, I always just say like, it depends how much you enjoy gaming. Like I have friends that still play on console that play video games. And they watch my streams, like friends in my, in my real life. And like, they watch my streams every day. They watch me play. They're like, oh, I'd love a PC. But, like, there's no way I buy one. Like, it's just not worth it. I have a console. It's great. And I'm like, like you game too much. Like, it's just at some point, it's like spend as much as it is tough to say. Because I remember like originally when I first bought it, how it crushed my soul with how much money yeah. I spent. I was like yeah. 850 bucks and I was losing. I couldn't believe I, <laughs> my mom like helped me out with it. But like, they, I mean, they all have jobs. They're all out of college. And I was like, dude, just if you game as much as you do, just buy a PC. It's like. You don't have to play on keyboard, obviously. Like I still yeah. play Fortnite and a lot of games on controller. And I think having a PC is just so like it's so good for gamers. You just see the game is clear, like the <laughs> clear as day compared to console. You can adjust your settings if you want. Like it looks so much smoother. It's just more fun. It's just like if you're a gamer and you really think you are and you and you know you love it and you play on console still, if you do get the money for a PC or you can save up, I would say do it. Like it's so it, it opens your eyes up to games too. Like there's so many games on PC that are great that console will never have probably. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I find it interesting. Like um, I, I'm, I'm an advocate of like, okay, if, if you've got some income, just take, you know, 10% of it, every, every, you know, amount of money that you that comes in, take 10%, put it off to the side. Just keep doing that until you have enough for a PC you like, and then boom, you're, you're in, you're, you're in. Oh yeah. But it's I also think worth it too. The issue I noticed with people is that, like, okay, that doesn't mean you have a desk in your house, though. Oh, <laughs> you yeah, know? no, you're right. That always you're creates right. the new issue of, like, like a kid. A Imagine problem. a kid that has no home real estate at all and is just, like, shares a room with his brother. Is like, now that PC is susceptible to your brother. Yeah, you kind of don't realize what you need, I guess. That makes sense. I honestly didn't even think about that. You kind of do need a space to put it and have it. and Yeah, place to play you kind of need a monitor too i mean it comes with a lot of things if you do want to actually get into like higher quality gaming god right. i didn't think about that i never tell people they need a desk yeah <laughs> or, get a, or a monitor gonna, yeah like, it comes with it starts to become the gateway drug to a lot of other things you're like i need a second mouse monitor no, you i do. need another mouse i need another pc you're like what what just no, you just want to watch your friends on your side monitor you just want to watch your favorite streamers <laughs> yeah. or something like yeah mm. okay so this this next question i have for you yeah, for those listening, I was kind of surprised by, um, and I'm I'm curious, <laughs> really want to know, competitive player, competitive person, what's the deal with bird watching? This <laughs> oh god, oh my god, we're gonna be sick. <laughs> I, you know it's weird. I was in Discord with my friend <laughs> yesterday, and we were looking up old like high school soccer stuff from other people, and like high school uh -huh. football from my friends. Like they were showing their huddle highlights or whatever. My one friend just out of nowhere. Somehow he's never heard of this. I've been friends with this kid for three years. He's like, like, so you, uh, what are you guys' favorite books? And I was like, what are you, what? And we're all answering. He's like, mine's bird watching something. And I was like, okay. He's like, he just said it like t to 10 people in Discord. And I knew it was directed at me. I knew he'd, re he'd just been reading my like Penn State bio. Dude, it's just stupid. We were all like freshmen and they were like, all the seniors were like, oh yeah, just put like, just pick a theme and like stick with it. <laughs> and like everyone trolled on their applications for or on their like Penn State soccer, uh, whatever it was, get to know me thing. Like other people had the same theme, but like or different, not bird watching, but they had like other things. It's just that's all it is. I I do not like bird watching. <laughs> like maybe I could get into it. It's not competitive. If they threw some money in there, maybe it is competitive. It you just competitive don't know. Bird, yeah, maybe I just haven't <laughs> tapped into the competitive bird watching market. But that's really funny you brought that up because I actually haven't talked about that in a while. Dude, every once in a while, people come. It's not hard to find me on if yeah, you really yeah. want to look at my name. Like, people uh -huh. come into my stream once every few months, probably once every few weeks, and they're like, "Do you like bird watching?" And I'm like, <laughs> or they'll be like, "What types of bird do you like to watch?" Like, as their first message ever, so it's like highlighted. And yeah. I'm just like, dude, it's not like it's like I, I think I, you like, gotta own it at this second. point in time. I do. Bro. I try to when normal <laughs> when people ask me that aren't on the podcast, I'm like, oh, I love bird watching, but like you, this is a little different. I can explain myself, I guess. <laughs> You just follow up with yeah, parrots are my thing, dude. Yeah, what it's about a huge, you? It's you know? huge. I love it. Blue Jays, cool bird. And, and the bummer Jays. thing about that joke is now that I've asked this question, if you're on any oh, other God. podcast and they watch this <laughs> podcast, they're gonna act like that. That's your thing now. You know, we're kind of mm. immortalizing bird watching to who you are as a person. So that joke will just keep going. I think it's crazy that I like regret making that joke. <laughs> like. 
I never thought that would come to anything ever. I never thought anyone would see that. I filled it out like it was like one day we were it was like preseason for soccer my freshman year, and we they just hand us a sheet, fill it out. I never thought like a little a two minute sheet that would go up on my would come back to like everything on my stream and like a podcast too. I love it. I love it so That's much. That's like a Nardwar question. Someone's gonna <laughs> Nardwar's gonna interview me in ten years and be like, yeah. "What do you think about bird watching?" I'll be like, "Dude, oh my god." <laughs> i can't wait can't yeah, wait for that moment great, man. okay so if uh somebody's been following your content they've been keeping up with you they they love what you're doing they love the competitive side of things um what unique piece of advice would you give to somebody who wants to follow in your footsteps um i think a lot of people would truly say like don't follow my footsteps because it's really bad mm -hmm. it's a bad bad path like in terms of like what I had going for me before I started streaming was absolutely nothing like it, it at all. So like, it's hard to be like, Oh yeah, you should do it because I took a lot of time and spent a lot of time on it. I am lucky enough. Like I bored on failed out of, out of the Penn state. I was at the, mm -hmm. to, and I came home and took online classes because I was doing so bad in there and I didn't care about playing for their team anymore. And I just came home and took two online classes a semester. So it's kind of tough for me to be like, Oh yeah, you should just do it. But like, I think, I guess as the as as a person who streams like every day, I think what what it would come down to is just like if you play video games every day at like a certain time, like you get off work, you get off school, and you know that you play for hours a day, why not just be live every time you play? And I kind of try to reiterate that with my friends in Discord, and they have seen the money people can make with it like yeah. firsthand. They've been a part of it for years in Fortnite or any game, and they just kind of like some of them just 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 not their thing. Like they they aren't yeah. into it, but. I really it's kind of like if you're playing the game for me at least why not be streaming but at the same time that kind of takes away your privacy and it takes away yep. a lot of things but that's definitely the gateway to doing it. it's just like stream every time you play consistently and you'll potentially get a small audience you can maybe grow that and I feel like I forgot the question almost but that <laughs> I feel like I almost answered it also I don't oh, yeah, remember exactly. it was good I I so you had mentioned like maybe don't follow in my footsteps the way I did it so what would be the advice if you could go back and change that, right? Like you're like, don't do this. What What are you saying people to do oh, by, by that? Mean, don't fail out of school is like the first yeah. thing. Like don't like take school a bit more. Cause I shouldn't, I mean, I technically still have, I probably a little bit less, but it was like 60 grand in debt for two years. Right. Like Penn State. So like I say, don't go to school unless you know what you want to do because mm. people really go for literally nothing and they do oftentimes figure out what they want to do but then there's also people that i know who've graduated who have jobs who hate what they do still they hate the job they're yeah. in they're like i wish i didn't go for this major but they're kind of stuck in that little niche market so it's dude it's tough just don't put yourself in a bad spot if you can help it yeah yeah that's good that's really really good so tell me a little bit of like what your like ideal collaboration would be a Fortnite. Fortnite's been notorious for like finding the weirdest things to be a collaborations. Is there anything in particular that you love besides bird watching that uh you would love to have as a collaboration in Fortnite? Dude, what have they not done? Like I'm trying to think of things. Everything that's come to my mind, I've recently gotten to Marvel. So yeah. I've watched like 16 movies in like a two week span around Christmas and like all those skins are in the game already. So right. Like, that's cool. But I, I can't think of anything really new. Dude, what have they not done that they need to do? They've done, like, I don't know, the Bible? <laughs> the Bible. Yeah, the Bible. They haven't had, like, a Jesus skin or, like, a God skin, I guess. Dude, that's probably something they could do. I mean, they have, like, soccer players, like, football players. They have, like, yeah. Neymar, Harry Kane, and them. Like, I, I really don't know what else they could even add that would be cool. I think they should definitely do more for, like, streamers. I can't believe, like, I mean, I think it could have kept them on the game longer if they did, like, a Nick Merckx skin oh, sure. earlier ninjas it took them three years how's that even possible yeah, that's it wild I, i'm surprised by that too how long it takes would like, have been really process. crazy if they drop imagine ninjas at his peak popularity drop a ninja skin i mean that dude he yeah. might get a one percent split of that and he'd still be making probably millions that's yeah. gross oh yeah. no okay so give me your i love asking this question too uh as people are getting to know you what is your unpopular opinion of fortnite you have an unpopular opinion that when you say it, you're like, it's your opinion. But people are like, are you serious? Like, <laughs> kind of like react that way. Um, huh. I definitely like, 
I guess technically any competitive opinion I have is probably the unpopular opinion because I'd imagine <laughs> the casuals run the game sort of in a way. So like, like a majority of my audience is pretty competitive or they, they understand the competitive like woes, so the com- yeah. player base and stuff. So like when I tweet it, it'll get like nine, like 80% of the likes will be like, or the replies will be like positive and then like 20% will be like negative. So I'm assuming the negatives yeah. are just the people who happen to follow me who are more casual players. So sure. I'd imagine any competitive, dude, I really don't think I have too many like, super unpopular opinions like it, on, on the game it's kind of just like everything i say i try to have some type of merit behind it as much as it might yeah. be crazy like looking back but like try to have some reasoning like if something's broken i'll be like oh well this is busted and people in the c- casual community will apply to me be like it's not even bad like you're <laughs> you're tripping like it's not just react like, <laughs> what is it uh just um uh just go with the flow or whatever like I, th- that that whole stigma stigma is like yo just like just get better at figuring it yeah. out you know? yeah learn the meta and you know adapt is the word adapt. Yeah. that's it that's adapt it. to the game and yeah. you'll just be better and some things like you could be the best player in the world and you could still be dude, the people that win events right now are losing their minds so it's not even like it's not like me who's not winning right now is right. like the only one freaking out like i just am horrible this season i'm like oh my god the game sucks like i think the game sucks when i was winning events like it's, <laughs> but like i love it though i like i love fortnite so it's not like that i just you know little things get frustrating sure sure and we'll dive into that after this last question for you it is an icebreaker i need to understand something okay i i i enjoy parts of fortnite where i get to put together an aesthetic and then eliminate somebody as like a, a guff character or something really dumb. I enjoy that. I think it's funny mm-hmm. when I'm sweating on somebody as a really weird, like a grandma or whatever Absolutely. it is, right? Um, so tell me, help me understand why every competitive player wears the exact same outfit and the exact <laughs> same pickaxe and has no un- originality at all in the game. None. Uh, <laughs> I, dude, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, there are some people with like, you don't see anyone wear like guy skins almost. And then like Mr. Savage will rock with some like dude skin. I don't even know how he does it because to be honest, but it's just whenever you wear a big character, you feel like you feel like it blocks your screen. Like you zoom uh-huh. in on your gun and your guns like in the middle of your screen, your guy's shoulders are right there. You can't even see the person you're shooting at or like yeah. you have a cape on, you have a goofy cape that's like fun for casuals. And then yeah. you, you jump and it like blocks your crosshair and you can't even see the guy. And you're like, I'm never doing this again. I mean, it's probably come to that. I used to wear guy skins and bigger, bigger skins in game, like in competitive. And then I think it only takes one time to lose a, a, a fight to like some nope. nerd with some sweaty skin. And you're like, well, I had a cape on in it. I couldn't even see like, <laughs> so I guess that's, that's probably what it is yeah, i just yeah. i can't you just don't want any disadvantage in competitive sure. when you can have, and then there's some skins that i don't even know how much you guys know about this but i guess there's some skins now that like they have less design and they're smoother so they they you get better frames while wearing them same right. as pickaxes so like everyone was using the star one for a while because i heard at first they're the mogul skiers guy yeah, guys the yeah. mogul masters everyone was like you'll wear that because it's like it doesn't have hair and hair gives your you frame loss and why would you want that and the the star wand with that gives you better frames in and of itself so you'd put on the star wand and like a skier and you'd run around like a maniac and it definitely did feel better i can't lie it definitely felt better for a while <laughs> you're like it so works. like i get no it definitely does does work or did work unless they tried to patch it but i mean yeah. it's crazy those little things you die it's, it's all just like you hear about it you're like oh it's bs right. and then you go into a game you die to someone with it you're like that guy had better frames than me <laughs> you just switch and then you can't go back <laughs> Like that guy's cheating. Like he's basically cheating wearing that skin. So that's I mean, that's amazing. where it comes from. As much as I like wearing the trolley, uh, funnier skins, it's just tough to justify wearing it competitively. My favorite thing. So I get it. When I when I do fill, I, I feel like competitive in general, but also casual. There's everybody has their excuse, you know. Oh, like every everyone has it, and they're ready. They're ready for it. If you do duo mm-hmm. fill right now. One of my favorite things to do is just listen for the excuse at the beginning. It's a disclaimer. They're like, hey, oh, just so you know, this is my first game. Start playing. Just, okay. Just so you know, like, <laughs> I haven't played this game since chapter two. Just so you know, like, it's all of these disclaimers. I'm like, I didn't ask. I'm just playing duo fill. Yeah. Like, calm down. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like in competitive, too. Like, whenever you get eliminated, it's like your mind starts reeling of like, why did I go down? And that's like what makes it competitive is you have to think of, all of the reasons why that didn't work out. Because if you're not being critical of yourself 
and of others, you're just going to be frustrated. You have to kind of learn from your mistakes. So it's really cool to see people Absolutely. like you where you're like, okay, what did I do wrong? You go into replay, you're kind of playing it out of like what, what, how you can improve. And ultimately those moments make you better at the game. But it also is really funny, I think, to a spectator who's just like, okay, bro, just stop wearing a male skin then. Like, quit complaining yeah, about it. Right. <laughs> but I find it really hilarious, and it's been fun for me to, like, watch streamers or and content creators, especially in competitive, where you're like, what is the first thing that comes out of their mouth? And sometimes they'll even catch themselves. They're like, oh, that's pink. And then they're like, no, it wasn't pink. And, but it, it's like their gut reaction. I love it. I love it all. It's so funny. Okay, so if we dive into the new season, I'm so curious. You're saying I'm not a huge fan of it right now. Um, as we are as we are doing this podcast today, uh, Covert Canyon just got released, which is like I haven't even big, seen that. Is that in yeah, the game right now? Underground POI. Yep, in the game, oh, like four uh, AM or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, just, I yeah. have no clue. I I went to yeah. bed last night. I remember my friend came in and was like, "Hey, oh, this new spot's coming out tomorrow." I'm like, "Wait, what?" And I literally just went to bed and. Thank God yeah, you said yeah. something. So I had no clue. I haven't even seen it. So we've got a boss in there that's like, six, I think, over 1,200 like health. So it's like between shield and regular okay. heals. It's got like a key card when you eliminate him and he drops an SMG, a gold, like a mythic SMG that's apparently kicks butt. Huge recoil, sure though. Does. And then the key card gets you into the vault. Inside the vault is even more ridiculous. Four of those like loot drops that come from the sky are in there. Four oh, IO chests <laughs> oh my and God. four of four those like, packages. Four like yeah, yeah, and four safes where you get gold, Got it. so you could buy things. So it I is can't like wait to fight that guy. <laughs> that guy's gonna destroy. <laughs> if you guys me. are listening. It looks like he's dying inside. Um, I'm thinking about it. I didn't know it was that crazy. Even like the old vaults weren't that crazy. <laughs> yeah, they were no, crazy. it's it's one of the most overpowered spots. So I think Tilted oh. might have some com competition in terms of where people will be dropping. Yeah. I'm also, sure. there's a heavy shotgun that acts like a sniper rifle. There's an SMG what? and <laughs> MK that have been nerfed uh, in damage, not in what they do to builds, but in in output. So those are the updates that have just happened. Obviously, you are hearing this for the first time, so we'll see how you how you react to all of it on stream. I'm sure. But what are your initial thoughts of those things that I just mentioned? Wait, the MK and SMG were nerfed in damage again? Or are you talking about the nerf again. that happened a couple of days ago? Again. Okay, again. Let's, I'm praying that they are significantly... Is the it's, fire rate uh, different at all? The, no, I don't think so. So no. the, AR, the AR is down one damage, which I don't think is <laughs> they significant love doing enough. That. Yeah, they love and doing then uh, the SMG, I think, is two damage. So not crazy, but I st because the spam is still going to be spammy right yeah um and i think i mean that's i'm gonna have nightmares issue. as an old man i will i'm gonna have like the sound in my ear of the stinger <laughs> forever i think i'll never forget that sound it'll come up someone will play it in my ear when i'm in like the nursing home and i'll throw up or something like i don't i mean it's not whatever it's just it's how they update the game i mean it'll probably be cool the new spot the new poi i'd imagine yeah. any anything they add as long as they're not replacing i think they have this feeling where they have to unless maybe it'll make the frames bad or something but like, I feel like they have this like mentality where if they get a new POI, they have to like replace an old one, and maybe yeah. they have to for some reason. But I would love if they just kept adding new yeah. ones to the map because more places to land make it easier for everyone. Like, it makes the game probably more enjoyable. There's less open space to run through where you're bored. Like, you fight ten yeah. people in one spot and you have to run or car from a spot to another when you could just fight in between. Like, I'd love to run ten feet and have a new POI and ten more feet and have a new one. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad they added a new place. Not so sure. I'm super happy about the mythic sub, but I knew it was coming. So, I mean, I can't be too yeah. upset about it. Well, it's really hard to, apparently to get because you have to eliminate that yeah. guy. And apparently he isn't. He's kind of like foundation where he's like, it takes a while to eliminate him. And he's got a mythic SMG so he can light you up. Yeah, so apparently him, it's kind of sure. like running and hiding from him and hoping other people do damage <laughs> to him. It's kind of like a group effort, like group yeah, assignment. Yeah, team. Like but one rock. person gets the credit credit in the end, you know. But yeah, so a lot of updates, and I think listeners are going to be excited for that as well. But I'm curious for, from from you, uh, what was your immediate reaction to Chapter Three um, as a whole? Um, and then what? Yeah, like how how did that go for you at, at, from like even a competitive standpoint? I'm really curious. Uh, I mean, like you said, you probably have a lot of casual listeners, so it's kind of it's kind of this might. This might get uh, get to people a bit, but it's definitely been 
you would like when a new map comes out in this game since we've only had three which is it's super exciting like i'm like oh my god finally like it's, it was a little stale and and yeah. people always compare the map changes they did from chapter one to chapter two i think where it's like chapter one they it would change up the maps every season or throughout the season the maps would change and like chapter two kind of the map from the beginning to end in comparison to chapter one from beginning to end is like there's no difference in the chapter two map so they really yep. weren't putting out too many changes i'm sure they're doing a great job behind the scenes or whatever but it just didn't look like you're from our perspective and then chapter three we're super excited to get this full new map and i think it would be to me at least before it came out it'd be very hard to mess something like that up like to to really like have a release of a new map and just still not have the game because it's always fun with the new map with something super yeah. fresh like that like they barely change the map seasons before sometimes and i'd have a good time on the season but this one in particular i think it's like it, it, I mean, as much as like I'm sure it's doing well for the casual player base, and, and I think the new map can be a big reason for like why like Ninja and all those Courage are back, and all the content creators and Tim, and I think this season, at a competitive standpoint or just in general, like they 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 love like tuning the weapons to a degree that just doesn't make any sense in my head at least, mm. because it just it just uh, it's really hard to like even say because I know some people are very casual about it and they love like the idea of like we talked about before like adapt to the meadow yeah, and get better right. but like in this game for me like shotguns like when you fight it goes from an ar at distance and then because of the uniqueness of fortnite you can build to your opponent and there's times where you literally cannot hit the person so yeah. you, you it has to be a close range fight 90 percent of the time because you can fight right. from distance but they won't die and then you gotta get up closer and that's how the game works and i think the ability to shoot I just think the shotguns are are a bit weak and the subs yeah. are really strong and people in competitive there's only one time before this season where I held a submachine gun and no shotgun but mm -hmm. now in this season almost everyone you run into holds a submachine gun and no shotgun and while I do agree yeah. with the adapt to the meta thing most of the time I think that that's more in terms of like when they add a launch pad for the first time and you're like oh my god what's sure. a launch pad how do I use this the right way uh -huh. like that's adapting the meta when they add like bouncers they're like oh my god launch pads are gone how do i adapt to bouncers sure. like that's going to be cool and competitive but now it's like adapt to three people submachine gunning your walls at the same time and like there's no adapt i have the best ping i'm in pennsylvania i mean i got pretty good ping. it's borderline <laughs> zero to ten and i still get shot through my builds like you just it's just it's I don't, I don't know i love the idea of a new map new chapter yeah i just think for for me to be as displeased as i am is pretty crazy just considering mm -hmm. We got a new map and I was super hyped coming into it. Like I was gassing the game two days before the yeah. downtime went up. I was super excited to play for the first time in a while. I was like, let's go. Like, and then right. it came out and I don't think we've ever had a worse season in terms of weapon tuning and weapon balancing mm -hmm. ever. And then they, I think they tweeted out like we listen or we're listening or something when they nerfed the SMGs by one damage a piece. And the uh -huh. game is the exact same pretty much like, yeah, it's just, it just feels, I don't know. It's like they want to test the competitive scene almost with the updates, but. I'm sure a lot yeah. of people love it. So, do you feel? And it's okay to not like it. I want. I want to be clear. You don't have to always be like, "Yeah, it's fine." You know, you don't have to play both sides. I'll. I'll play the other side. Just like in terms of like what people might be saying. Okay. But what? What? What do you think that? Um, and would you say this is an opinion that you, that most competitive players are also voicing? Would you say this opinion of like? Oh yeah, a lot worse than what I just said too. I mean, they yeah, yeah, most totally, people would probably totally. tell you they straight up hate the game. Like they like yeah. people people win events and they they act they tweet out actively like this game's not good right now. Like it's really really bad and like they'll be winning and like I, I don't know. It comes some people probably think it's because I'm not like performing as well and I think that comes down to lack of playing and I just can't be asked to really grind it the game the way it is like i just want it to be fixed before i get back into like full grinding if i if i'm even going to again yeah so. so okay so in your opinion then um what do you think they're trying to accomplish right so like i'm sure epic <laughs> doesn't want to completely destroy competitive right like i'm sure that's not their goal they're not like at a board meeting like all right guys how are we going to piss off the competitive crew like i've got an idea let's make a spam meta like shut up brian <laughs> and then you you're, know you're chapter right, three comes around <laughs> and like brian's like i still i think we should still do the spam meta they're like all right brian you're you're you know you're like, i don't think that's what they're actively trying to do but what from a competitive standpoint what do you think they are trying to accomplish here are they trying to flush competitive people out like are they trying to i think i think so 
in like you do? I wasn't gonna put it like that until you said it, sort of. But because you weren't, say, but you weren't saying it in that light. You were saying it like, are they trying to? But like, yeah, yeah, it does feel like every update throughout Fortnite's history is almost. I remember the OG complaints I had back when I was on consoles. Like they tried to decrease the skill gap at every turn. Like no matter mm. what there is in the game, even if it's not like something that's super broken, but it's something that people are using, they try to like. They always consistently throughout the years have tried to decrease the skill gap in one way or another in terms of like people get really good at building and they bring in a gun that just makes it obsolete and people are yeah. people love it. The casuals love it because they can kill someone right. who's building like crazy and they get so happy and like that's fine. But for me, I absolutely hate when they decrease the skill gap. I think that's been my my right. first complaint of Fortnite ever when they, they do things that cater to the casual community. But I fully understand the the money there how the casual yeah the casual community affects the the major population of the game i just feel like uh there's been a lot of excuses with them in terms of what they they say like they they go back on what they say a lot at epic it feels like in terms of like i don't even know if i can say can i say that like yeah yeah you might have to cut that out i mean voice your own opinions man it's just it's just like at first since since they did like og updates like they would they would go back on what they say i remember at one point one of the updates they gave around chapter two midway through maybe was like early on season two maybe duo fncs was like something about how they wanted to keep the loot pool like people were like give us a separate loot pool for comp i remember that complaint very avidly because like grenades were in the game people were throwing them like crazy and then they came out with this like sentiment sentiment or whatever and they said like oh well the reason we want to keep the casual and competitive loot pool the same is so casuals can kind of know what it's so so the game is the same for them so if they want to get into competitive they're like oh well they're playing the same game as me but sure it's just for money and they just are really good at it so you it's easier to get into it. and i love that i love that I, ideology i yeah. think that's like the best thing where you try to like yeah the call of duty competitive was 4v4 and then comp casuals was 6v6 so they met in the middle for a couple of years and made it 5v5 i think it's like a smart attempt but then like a week later or like a couple of weeks later after saying they want to keep the loopholes the same they removed nades from comp because they were busted and mm-hmm. everyone was complaining but they kept yeah. them in pubs so it was the first time i think we really saw like the public and competitive side have a really big difference in terms of loophole yeah which means they can do it and they initially right. went back on their statement and i know now it's like why not just keep a consistent competitive loophole because in my eyes that's like it would i think i do really feel like they do things to try to weed out competitive scene slowly and slowly over time because they really do they just hired hogman i love the i love hogman he's the man yeah. they hired yeah. him he's my boy but like and i hope he does a great job he really seems to love it so i'm glad he loves yeah. it but like and i so it seems like like they wouldn't hire someone like that if they weren't trying to do better but yeah it's not like they show us that they're trying to do better like the best players in the game are tweeting consistently that the game is horrible and and they just like see it and like they get thousands of likes on their tweet tens of thousands and like it does feel like it goes ignored they nerf the subs by one damage and like it feels like they're messing with us a little bit you know it's like sure. a slap in the face keep pubs how they are if people love it but you know maybe tone down the competitive issues as much as possible have a separate team for it or separate side for it or something i don't really know what goes on there so i can't really yeah. speak to it but just how i, I feel, feel like about that's it, a so. that's a very uh a very good take on what i've seen from most competitive players is like this this frustration of um how someone someone who <clears throat> is a bot can even the playing field at any given moment <clears throat> for somebody who has spent their life over the last few years like fine tuning the details right like it would be the equivalent of like you playing soccer and then all of a sudden they're like, we're going to add a third goal and it's going to be right <laughs> next to, <laughs> yeah. you know, your, your enemy. That would be very frustrating to a soccer player who's been like, no, this is, this game has been the same over and over yeah, again. Of course. That and I think the, the difference uh, I would, I would push back on is the game can't be the same or it'll probably die. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So then you have that as a, as a, as a, as a hardship because if the game stays too much the same no one will play it anymore and so that also means no income for competitive which means no casuals care to watch people play it because it's boring or it's the same 
And so I think the hard part about it is if we kept the loot pool the same, um, no one would w- would watch that over time. It would slowly die. And I think yeah. to, from a spectator standpoint, I, I talked about this with acting like Tommy. It's like, it's kind of like this Coliseum and there's this king and he's like, everybody that's in the pit that's fighting, you know, everyone's like roaring them on like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the king's like, you know what? Add tigers. And they're like, everyone in the stands is like, yeah, tigers. Yeah. And then they're that like, you know what? Sense. Fire arrows, you know, like spike pits. And uh, I don't know, like a giant. And and you guys as competitive players are down there in the pit. Like, what? Wh- what? <laughs> what? Like yeah. constantly, like what? And that has got to add a, a crazy amount of stress <laughs> to, to you as no, a player. Yeah. Because you're like, epic i i've been practicing to be a warrior i didn't train to fight a tiger i didn't i had no training fighting a tiger and now you have to learn as it goes and you know you've got a following you've got like people that like look up to you and all this stuff and and then you have this added stress i can imagine that being very difficult to manage i mean dude you put it in a better way for i mean than i could i I think that's like a perfect analogy like realistically because no you're absolutely right with the competitive like if you keep it boring in the same i think that's where the issues come from i think that's where people want that separate loop pool where it's not even like it might even be harder to watch but at this point i feel like they've completely full almost fully um killed off the interest from casual players in the competitive scene like the the competitive Mm -hmm. scene doesn't feel like it's really growing it doesn't feel like it's really shrinking too much the only way it shrinks is when they really submit it like this and people avidly quit this is the most i've seen people quit ever mm-hmm. and we got a new map which is crazy because usually new maps like fresh start no one yeah, has their totally. spot claimed i can land wherever i want super exciting and i just i cannot believe how many people i've seen with mm. but to your point i think that i think that's really solid where it's just like uh, people it's frustrating for competitive but i really don't think that the competitive scene is is capable of growing especially without lands mm. and massive prize pools anymore like you really do need to throw yeah. money at it like they were so right now it's almost like it's where it is, and I think it would make people very happy if, like you said, the guns can change. I don't want them to be the same forever, but like when something yeah. like the SMG comes into the game and it's this absurd, I mean, it, I think it just needs to be removed straight up. Like I've, I thought SMGs the last it's chapter two, at least, when people got really good, I think SMGs have always been a bit of an issue. They always shoot through builds, yeah. no matter how what your ping's on. And if your ping's worse, which is hard for majority yeah. of people who don't have good ping, they're getting shot even more. I am on zero and I get torched through my build. So I'm like, mm-hmm. this isn't fun. I can't even imagine dealing with it in Africa where kids are in my chat. Like right. I have 150 ping and I still play. I'm like, how do you even play the game? But like, or if you general, lose like, your duo partner, right? Like you're, you're fighting and you get beamed. Your duo goes down. That is an instant. Like, all right, I'm now going to be pushed by two people spamming into yeah. my builds from There's both nothing directions. You do anymore because the shotguns and, and I'm take them out. Yeah. 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 I think in previous seasons in a 1v2 with a shotgun that is viable, it's like, right. and without the sub being as busted, like, it's really doable. It's really like, okay, well, sure. the, the fight's not over. I'm not dead. Now it's like, the fight's over. I'm dead. Like, you, there's no, yeah. you, the only way to kill someone is to meet them with what they're going to meet you with. They come into your box with an SMG. You have to kill them with your SMG almost yeah. and pray that their teammate's not right behind you. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I think I played a cash cup yesterday. I think it happened five times where I would, you know, 1v2, and I would take someone out instantly, hit him with my shotgun for 30, and then submachine gun for 170, they die, and I'm already weak because the shotgun hit for so little, but if it did like yeah. 150, I would have probably killed him and got out. It's just consistently not the not the best, but, you yeah. know, I, I... And I think yeah. maybe my, my thought is, okay, I'm trying to put my... I always try to put my head, like, in ep- Epic Games. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not sitting with them at all, but i'm just trying to imagine right like, no, like yeah. okay the smg is going to be really powerful this season like great what do we have to counter that um armored walls like okay like like I, that I, is that i i feel like that is their their gut reaction it's like let's just put armored walls in it's like oh competitive is having some issues let's put some armored walls in yeah like i mean that's walls, viable ish uh, yeah ish right like it like, works ish. i mean they work but then yeah. they come to your other wall and you know you only exactly. have two and it's like exactly. I don't know, like exactly so i feel like it's kind of like this they they release something and then they watch and then they go <laughs> hmm and, you know oh, like do they what? watch if they watch or they I, I mean i cannot imagine being excited about an update i'm like they're gonna love it and i go into 
the one of the biggest like clicks or like one of the biggest pro streams uh -huh. where they're very genuine like a genuine person you go to watch and you're excited for the new update that you just helped release and they are like this game is horrible it's the yeah. worst i hate it right now and you're just like what the what are we doing like i i don't uh, even know what it's like i can't even imagine can you imagine what it's like to no, be them yeah like, i don't know but do they do they love that i it feels this is the first game i've ever played yeah. where it feels like they like i think i feel like i said i've played call of duty growing up my whole life and i think from their point of view they're really frustrated with like activision infinity ward or whatever treyarch they're they're frustrated with infinity ward i think because they just mm -hmm. it feels like they don't care for us, yeah. it feels like they care to like make us mad. I've never experienced a game where they <laughs> want us to be like pissed at all times. Like they love updating to make us upset. And like yeah. I completely get that the 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 frustrations at an all time high and like that people. I I feel I do feel bad because I I know a lot of my audience is casual. I know one of the biggest things you shouldn't do as a content creator is bash the game you play. And yeah. Uh, I learned that from like Ninja back in the day. People would talk right, right, right. trash about the game, and he'd be like don't say that bro like it's the best game like if you gas it and talk right. highly of it people are more likely to watch because they don't want to listen to someone complaining but right as a real human being it feels almost impossible to be nick a30 right now how is he <laughs> i always say he gets off stream beats the life out of his pillow there's no way he doesn't like go into rage mode off stream like there's no way i can't imagine he's so nice well, yeah, and friendly loves it and then he see this is... <laughs> there's no way it's, it's crazy yeah and i feel like that's the the piece that i feel like I'm wondering if we can arrive at is like, what do you do with that reality where you're frustrated all the time? Like, for example, I'll be streaming, playing some games and I'll get a sniper rifle as my first gun. Like every time I land hmm. and I can only do that. So, uh, so, so much until I go insane. Like, it's just like, eventually I'm like, I cannot no, I can't even no scope this guy. Cause it doesn't do enough damage. Like yeah, to, to, to do anything when he has an SMG and I have a sniper. And so I start to go insane and my chat's like, okay, here we go. It's about to happen. And then uh, I go to Twitter <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, Instantly. when, when are we going to like just the spawn <laughs> on the, the snipers ridiculous. Right. Like, and then I'm on Twitter and then everything starts going. And it's like, I, I feel like there is something there that, either needs to be worked out in myself or we need to figure out as a community because like those gut things are, can be really like toxic. And I see it in myself. Yeah. Like I don't ever want to be a toxic person. I, in fact, the reason why I stream is to bring joy and excitement and like brighten people's day. But when I become toxic, it's like a switch turns on and then people are like, Whoa, <laughs> what's going on with this guy and so i wonder like how do we find a place where people that are going insane like you how do we find a place like where we're not just like laughing at like the fact that you're dying inside like how do we find a place where it's like okay like what does it look like not to be nick 30 because i don't think that that's a realistic expectation for a lot of people absolutely not um but how do you how do you exhaust that frustration in a place to where it's helpful and building the community up rather than being toxic. Do you have any ideas on that? Um, I don't, I, dude, it, like you said, it, it's like, it's a buildup. It's like you die to the, yeah. you get the sniper out of the chest one time and you're like, whatever. Like, that's yeah. annoying. And then next game it happens, you're like, okay, that's kind of really, that's crazy. That's funny, right, chat? Like, that's two <laughs> in a row. Like, and then like, after like eight in a row, 10 in a row, or 10 in an hour span, you're like, yeah what is going on right now like you're and then right. he, like you said I, I do i don't know if there's a way properly to paint it in a good light i think one thing i've learned to enjoy this season is actually at like it is the casual side of things because of youtube like i've mm -hmm. been really into like grinding my youtube channel and having a good time making videos so i have been playing pubs for the first time ever and mm -hmm. as much as i i absolutely hate pubs don't get me wrong <laughs> but for YouTube videos, like I'm not gonna be able to record like uh there's one challenge where it's like switching from controller to keyboard in between every kill. And I did that recently. It's like like wow. it is trying to find fun. I can't do that in arena. I'll get destroyed. The second I have on keyboard, yeah. I'm getting I'd be I'd be lucky to get a kill, but I go into pub and I can do it pretty easily. So yeah. it's like a necessity for me. So I enjoy it, but and I have been enjoying that more than the game. Like I mean, like you talked about, like you're on stream and you you know it's like a build up, like something happens a bunch of times and you're getting frustrated and your chat's like, yeah. oh here it's it's coming. 
Like, it feels like everyone, not including myself, not, no, including myself, but not limited to myself, is, it gets on, like, scoped. Like, I have a lot of friends that play this game all day, every day, and it is almost like a, Arena is the main thing to stream for ca- competitive players who play, who want to stream, they stream Arena, and they go, and it, it feels like a game. It's like, how long can I do this before I lose mm-hmm. my mind and get into Trio Arena? Because they go into solos to start, everyone. You play solos yeah. for a little bit, and it's like, after everyone... When I get when I see like I play Apex a lot right on the side yeah mm-hmm. and they're like hey uh, I've been solo queuing for a little bit do you want to play and that's how they ask to play they'll come to your chat and be like hey uh, I'm in the same rank as you do you want by any chance you want to team up like I've been solo queuing for a bit having a, you know playing in yeah. Fortnite it's like yo save me from solos and then you get into trios mm-hmm. it's not it's not even the same question anymore with this game it's like save me please help me and play with me because I'm gonna go crazy and people get yeah. irritated. And then they play duos, trios, and it's a lot more fun. And then again, after a couple hours of that, it gets really, it's like, it's, ir- you get irritable. It's irritating the mm-hmm. whole game. And then yeah. it's like, and then people get off. It's like, the game is how long can you stay on for at this point? Like, how long can you mm-hmm. grind your streams in this meta? And in other games, it doesn't feel like that, which is the sad thing to me. It's like, you know, people get on, you know, they're ending stream in a couple hours, or you know, they're only playing solos for a little bit, and then they're going to play with their friends and then get off because you know what it's yeah. like. And it's, the audience has to know what it's like. They know they get on. I get on in great mood. Sometimes I'm not in the best mood. 90% of the time I get on, I'm in like such a good mood. I'm playing music. I'm vibing with the stream, having a good time, having a good conversation. And within a, an a two hour, three hour span, I'm a different person entirely. And I don't mm-hmm. like that. That's why I've been playing other games on stream sure. and really trying to reach out and branch out of Fortnite because it is tough to. I'm a human, a human being. What do you like? What did you do right. before Fortnite? What games did you play before Fortnite? <clears throat> I played a lot of Destiny, Overwatch, and um, I loved Battlefield. Battlefield, Battlefield. Okay, I was a big Destiny yeah. two guy, but that game yeah. apparently wasn't that good because it was like Destiny one yeah. or something like that. I'd never played yeah. Destiny one, so like Destiny two was really cool to me. But everyone else was yeah. like, "Oh, this is the same game," and I'm like, "This is yeah. great!" Like, what are you talking about? But like, yeah. like you said, like it, back before I streamed, and maybe even you too. Like, I think <clears throat> majority of people kind of do. Like, if I didn't want to play, I played like FIFA, Rocket League, and like uh call of duty and it was like yeah. oh, i don't feel like getting on rocket league today and i'd play fifa or i'd right. sit there for hours and not play a game talk to my friends and we would figure out what we wanted to play see if any new games are out and i think the psych psych it, i don't even know what word this like the psychopathic it's psychotic to get on yeah. every day and be like oh i'm gonna play fortnite because my stream loves it and as much as like it's your job right. and that's where yeah. i make the most money if i do a fortnite stream it's like it right. gets to a point where it's like if i wasn't streaming there's no there's no way I'd play Fortnite still. I probably would have been mm. I'd probably been done years ago, which is the saddest thing to say because I do have this like love for the game. Yeah. I really do have this like uh, incredible like I, I do appreciate what it's done for me and everything. But I would be lying if I said if I wasn't streaming. There's just there's no way I would have been with my friends a year and a half a year and a half mm. ago two years ago and been like, "Yo, what are we playing today?" One of them been like, "Yeah, I don't want to get on Fortnite." And I would have been like, "Yeah, I don't really want to get on Fortnite either. Let's play something else." And that's how it is when you're not streaming. So how do people expect streamers to right. be like, let me get on Fortnite every day? Because it's amazing. Because it's really not. And it really does. And it hurts my audience. I go on stream and I'm like, this game is horrible. And I yeah. and they're like, mm. but I thought you love Fortnite. And I play Apex. And they're like, where's Fortnite? My sh- it's almost gotten to a point, thank God, where, I, not that this is a good thing, because I hate when people come in, they're like, where's this game? But like when I don't play Apex now, I have a lot of viewers that are like, huh. Apex time? Like they see me getting frustrated. And they're like, is it time yeah. for Apex? And they're excited. Because I've been yeah. really loving that game right now. So. I, yeah. I think like to, I think to your point of yeah like any any type of rep anything you do like again and again and again you're repeating the same actions over yeah. and over again like there is a little bit of insanity <laughs> in that <laughs> you know and I feel like what's what's unique at least what I would describe as unique about Fortnite is it is such a different game than all other yeah. games absolutely and there is so much going on with it where even if I left Fortnite. I would still want to know what's going on. Yeah, and I would probably come. always. It's it's like it's one of those games that will will be always be. I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the the thing that I'm taking away from this is like to know your own limits when you're when you're frustrated and when you're having a hard time and know when to to transition and switch out to enliven your attitude. Right. So if yeah. you're if you're if you're not feeling it and it's going rough and things are going like and I and I'm. I'm competitive a little bit to myself as well, like in a different way. 
but like i will like okay there's a little there's it's good to push into that a little bit right Mm -hmm. but then when you start to kind of lose yourself i feel like that's when you need to either a call in for help like play with friends play with people that like brighten your day and then two maybe like switch it up like make sure yeah you're you're a gamer not a Fortnite gamer exactly that's right like right term yeah yeah and i feel like that's an important piece to I think keeping some sanity in 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 some of this, especially for the competitive audience who are having a really hard time right now. I'm really hoping that this is kind of encouraging to them because I, I I want that. You know, I, I want like people that are listening to feel like they have the tools to 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 work out some of this stuff because it's a, it's an actual reality for people. Yeah. And so I want to be the guy that like kind of looks at it all and goes, okay, like how do we how do we pivot? How do we move? How do we make it more healthy and helpful for everybody? And so I feel like my last question that I have for you is in, in your eyes, you know, in, from, from your stance, what could Fortnite do to bring you back into good graces? Like um, with all of the context in which we've talked about already. Um, dude, the, the harsh reality is like the game's been out for what, four years now. Four and years. like, I really don't know. I think Chap talked about this in his like GTA stream and like it happened. It comes up a lot for a bunch of streamers that quit. And at some point, no matter how good the game is, it it gets to a point where like you've been playing it for years. You've been playing it for four years. And it's like I played since the day the game came out and I love it. And I have my good moments, my best moments on the game on stream. But it and I really do think like it could improve my short term mood if they fix the meta and they listen to the comp community just personally. But sure. realistically, the game's been out for four years and I just don't know how much longer you can do the same thing. Like you said, we're, we're gamers. Yeah. It's like the worst thing in the entire community is how, how I think at least in the streaming community is how toxic viewers get when their yeah. streamer switches games. I think that's one of the worst sure. things. I have 100%. a couple of friends that refuse to play Apex with me because I know they won't tell me this, but I know that they don't want to hop off Fortnite because they don't, no one wants to see their viewers decrease, cut in half. Because sure. it's a scary thing. It's your livelihood. Totally. You see yeah. your viewers cut in half, your money gets cut, and you're, everything, you're, everything you do playing another game, if your main game is Fortnite, if you play another game, you're taking a hit. And people sure. don't realize that they're doing that for their sanity. Like they're mm-hmm. attempting to play another game for their sanity while also driving yeah. themselves insane because they're not doing the right thing in terms of content. Like kids would argue, people would argue, like that's the, you should play Fortnite. It's your job. And like every, we're all, you know, people like i don't know if fortnite for me just after four years is it's not what it was and everyone knows that but it is it does become psychotic a bit to keep running it and i think it does get a little is a little stale as much as the game's the best probably i would say it's the best game probably that's ever been released in terms of what it's done for gaming and everything yeah. for me personally i just don't know if it's if it's uh if they could do anything they could probably make the game the best it's ever been and i'd have a great time on it but i'd still think yeah. about playing other games like and that's that's a hard thing as a Fortnite streamer to really to, to get away from is like strict Fortnite all the time. It's really tough to break out of this game. Like you see Tifu's audience still, Nick Merck yep. still gets it. He quit Warzone and his community yep. hates like hey, people literally. I've never seen Nick Merck get hate ever in my life. Right. I've been following him. He's the reason I stream. Been following him since Black Ops Three. I think it's been like eight years now, seven years, and like. I have never seen him receive hate and he quit Fortnite. He got a lot, a little bit. Warzone, his numbers went up. He goes to Apex and people are losing it. They're like, I hate yeah. that you quit Warzone. Like, he's just, he wants to have fun. And he, uh, he's right. like the epitome of that right now. Like, quitting right. whatever he needs to do to enjoy himself on stream. He loves Apex. Like, I go into stream, he, he wins a game and he's like, gets up and he's hype yeah. again. Like, I, I've missed that from him. I do. Yeah. So I'm happy he's happy. But that's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much I think, I think that's, my answer. With that. I think like, I love the honest approach here, right? Because I feel like there's people that kind of get indoctrinated, I guess, if you will, to Fortnite culture, where it's like I've got to, I've got to maintain a, like a happy face and yeah, like absolutely. all this stuff. I've got to support a creator, all these things, and and yeah, like I think like there there is a piece of that as like what you should do, and I think if you get to a place where you keep doing what you should do is over like what's going on with you, <laughs> like that can be super dangerous. And so I think like your honest approach of like, um, I, I've been playing this game for a long time <laughs> and really? I need to yeah. recognize that. And that's, that's, a, that's a natural thing, you know, like that's a natural thing to, to play 
many games if you're a gamer yeah. you know the non-streamer and, thing it's like yeah a, yeah it's a human. non-streamer thing exactly <laughs> yeah and i've been playing games you know since the beginning i'm still not playing the games that i originally played when i first started games right like i'm not playing super smash anymore like competitively yeah, it was fun for me that was great it was awesome but i, I think it's okay like i think listeners need to also hear that it's okay <laughs> like you can you can you can let it go you you can mm-hmm. and and you'll be fine mm-hmm. Because if if you're going insane and you have crazy cool numbers, that's probably not the best reason to be a content creator or streamer. Because we w- we don't want to see you deteriorate in front of everybody. Yeah, and um, then it looks it gets worse for your viewership too. It's not even right. like you keep right. You're not even the same person that gained the viewers in the first place. Sure. You're just a different different person entirely. It's just a right. human thing to be sick of things and move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. All right, so thank you uh for that voice i i really do i'm really grateful i think like fortnite's such a complex thing and i think having all voices at the table are crucial to getting a good understanding of like where it's at where people are at and kind of and i think especially coming from you like where the competitive community are kind of at and so i i'm i feel like i'm like grateful for your honesty uh through all of this has been really really fun to chat with you um so I'd love to hear for those that are listening and they also are enjoying what, what you're saying, like what projects are you working on right now? Um, what, what can your fans look forward to those that are, are coming that are, are here oh, for you on hot ones. I love it. <laughs> and then what, uh, what is your support a creator? If people do want to use you to support you? Um, I actually don't, I'll start off by saying that I don't have a support creator anymore. I haven't had that for a while. And that says, okay, dude, there is a way, but there, I have never actually said this, but I found out on, on stream the other day. Cause usually I type in my code and it won't let me do anything anymore. Cause I lost it. Huh. It was just like a, it was like the supporter creator 2.0 came out and I, yeah, they had never paid me for, I definitely have thousands of dollars in that account that they never gave me. So like, I kind of, I was like, you know what? I'm never getting this money. I've tried. I've called They're Like we paid you and I'd never get it. So I just kind of gave up. I don't check that email address anymore. <clears throat> and the 2.0 came out. I know I'm rambling. 2.0 came out. And basically, I didn't check the email. So I didn't apply for it. I got my supporter creator code taken because I missed it. It's just fine. Oh, I don't wow. even care because oh, right. they're never going to pay me anyway. And then it was gone for a while. Now someone else has code Colazo, I think. So that's a little scary. Whoa. I typed in the other Dang. day and it came up. Unless it's just me and they gave me a new account. But I, and I don't know about it. But So I don't have a support creator anymore. I haven't for a while. So that's fine. But I mean, and other otherwise, like definitely doing like... Just with, with YouTube, like I said, it's kind of a game for me right now. I love seeing, like, the, it, it's really fun. Like, I know it's a numbers game, and it's almost like a just just do it for growth. But it is really cool to, like, post a video and see it do, put time into it and see it do a 1 out of 10, like, your best video of the last 10. Or, like, you get a 10 yeah. out of 10, you're like, what can I do better? What's the issue with this video? Is it the thumbnail? Like, is it hard to look at? Like, it's a game. Yeah. It's really fun. So I've been posting daily for about a month now. And, like, I think that's super fun to me because all the videos, at least, like, before it was like stupid videos and now we have like a little list where i get like ideas and i record some of the ideas so they're really thought out it could be better obviously but we're working on it cool daily videos are the biggest thing on my youtube and then streaming i've just been you know it's been Fortnite for competitive and a lot of apex in my free time and a lot of other games trying to have fun with my audience so i think that's the biggest thing i think yeah that's great will we be seeing you in the grotto the new grotto absolutely not competitively probably not <laughs> i don't want to fight for that i'd be losing my mind but like I'll, you'll definitely be seeing me die to the grotto weapons i'm sure yeah. and yeah. get destroyed by the S- smg losing my mind probably for well, sure if you ever if you ever want to link up and play together like i said i'm nowhere near your level however i can bring some interesting and comedy um uh, <laughs> enlightenment into Dude, your if life you walk so up you, with a sub and that i mean you are at my level you if you come up with that <laughs> mythic submachine gun you are more than i you might be significantly above me right now so i'm always that pro seriously like always if you ever yeah yeah if you ever want to run something I, I i love i love messing with people on stream and with other content creators so if you <laughs> if you're looking for content let me know we'll absolutely get some stuff together 100 all right, man. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, be sure to check out Colazzo on all his socials, YouTube, Twitter, all that good stuff. Thank you for your honest, uh, your honest <laughs> conversation today, man. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Seriously, it was a good time. Yeah. Good talk. All right, man. 
Uh, and with that, we are done with this episode. Thanks again, Klaza, for being on the Unvaulted Podcast. And of course, a thank you to all of our listeners who are listening now. Feel free to contact us at Unvaulted Pod or The Squatting Dog on Twitter. Also, uh, be sure to check out Colazzo and everything he's working on. YouTube is where he's going. So like help him out, check it out and uh, let him know in a comment how you feel about his videos until next time. I'm squatting dog. We'll see you later.